and let us all that we can to build a better future. So now moving on towards uh, another um, thing that happened while you were here in Chicago, or at least you spoke to somebody uh, in an interview, Ben Jarowski, who is basically telling you in that live stream, uh, you know, maybe if you brought the ruckus to the GOP and Republicans. And, of course, Hard Lens Media, we've got our fair share of criticism, too, by saying uh, from people saying, oh, you got to be, uh, 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 you got to hold the Republicans accountable. Why are you always being mean to Democrats and progressives? Uh, what do you say to critics that are saying that you are just only focusing on Democrats and on Republicans? It's, it almost seems like weird favoritism just to protect our, I guess, the progressives who still don't deliver on anything. You know, I think if there's one thing we didn't need in the last four years was more Trump criticism. It was coming from everybody, and the people who were criticizing Trump were doing it in a very superficial way, and they weren't doing it in the way they should have. It wasn't a systemic critique because Donald Trump was a pretty average Republican president, and he was less of a warmonger than the Democrats, and he was uh, he had deported way less people than the Democrats. So all this, this, this idea that he was some kind of fascist, uh, and by the way, I criticized Donald Trump. I told my, every time he would do something that was egregious, like when he passed that, that tax cut bill, I was like, now if you voted for Donald Trump, you got to admit to yourself you're a chump, that Donald Trump took you for a ride. He's not giving you anything he said he was going to give you. He's not giving you health care and the government's not paying for it, right? He's not making sure you have good jobs. He's not doing... And, and so uh, what is he doing? He's giving a trillion dollars to the richest people in the country while he doesn't give you student debt relief, while he doesn't give you a living wage, while he doesn't give you a public option or health care. So... Uh, uh, I've said that also, but the focus of my the, see, I don't think the problem uh, in America is that we have a, a right wing party. The problem is we don't have a left wing party, and so I I think that people once people wake up to that fact, change can happen. We don't people uh, on the left already think the Republican Party is the evil, racist. Uh, misogynistic, all that bad. They already, uh, why would I need to? So what they are asking for is, can you give me some porn? Can you give me some hate porn? I, I, we all, you know how I hate the Republicans. Can you just give me some hate porn? And I'm like, that's boring. That's low hanging fruit. And I'm going to give more of a systemic critique. And the critique is that we don't have an opposition party in the United States. And everybody knows what the Republicans are, but nobody really knows what the Democrats are. And what's happening through force to vote and what happened through uh, uh, with the squad and the Justice Democrats is now it's being revealed that even the people who espouse and give, well, Chris Hedges talked about it. That in, uh, uh, and so did Thomas Frank in Listen Liberal. They talk about how they know all the words of progressivism and democracy. They know how to pay fealty to democracy, liberty, and equality. Uh, but then they go and legislate exactly against those things. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Joe Biden, when he ran, what did he run on? He ran on a fifth. So when I did that interview with Ben, uh, what's his, how do you say his last name? Jabonski. Ben, ben uh, He was trying to convince me that it was the Republicans who are standing in the way of all, because we share the common goals. We, ben and I share, we all want a, a living wage. We all want Medicare for all. We all want to end the wars. We all want student debt relief. We all want the drug war to end. So we had the same goals, but he just wants to spend time pretending it's the Republicans standing in the way. He goes, those people are working against you. I go, the people who are standing in my way of those things are the Democrats and Joe Biden right now. They have complete control of government and they could give us all those things. They're not. Joe Biden ran on those things, and he's not doing it. So this idea that it's the Republicans who are obstructing this, it's a one-party rule. What, what is that quote about the Americans have one party, but in normal American extravagance, they have two of them? Right? They have one right-wing party, but they have two of them. Something like that. I'm butchering the hell out of that quote. But So that's my answer to that. And when I said to Ben... Uh, that it's Joe Biden's the president right now, and he's the one denying me those things. He could do it with a stroke of the pen. He didn't really have a comeback for that because that's a fact. Joe Biden could give us all Medicare for all right now through Section 1881A, which says all you have to do is declare an emergency, which there is. This is a pandemic. It's a national emergency, and you could give everybody Medicare for all, just like they did in a town somewhere, I think, in Montana. There was a chemical spill. Uh, the federal government came in and gave they all, this t a whole town has Medicare for all. Uh, just as which is exactly what Barack Obama could have did to Flint, Michigan, and he didn't do it inexplicably. So um, the problem again. So 
so to me, I think that's really sophomoric view of things. It's like, hey, how do we, uh, why don't you make fun of the, why, why don't you rip into the Republicans? Hey, how about if I rip into the system that gives us all this shit stuff? And that's what I'm doing. And right now, the problem is we don't have an opposition party in America. Uh, Nancy Pelosi serves the oligarchs just like Chuck Schumer, just like Mitch McConnell, just like Donald Trump. They agreed on all the big stuff. They gave Donald Trump $132 billion extra dollars a year to do war. That's not $132 billion extra dollars once. That's $132 billion every year in perpetuity. That's an extra trillion dollars in eight years that we could have, we could end homelessness with that money 10 times over. Uh, they just don't want to do it. So the political will isn't there, which is why the United States is slipping into being like Brazil. And if you want to go keep criticizing the people everybody already hates, that's not going to get us anywhere. What's going to get us everywhere is, is somewhere is when people realize that both parties are in bed with the exact same donor class and we live in a rapacious oligarchy and until people start withholding their votes for Democrats, nothing will change. That's what Lawrence O'Donnell said. Well, to quote Joe Biden, he said, nothing will fundamentally change and, and nothing has. Uh, final note for this question. First, we want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day uh, while you're here in Chicago to be with us. But for those who don't know, uh, for our viewers and subscribers who don't know where to find you, where can they go online to find you on social media and also see where they can watch you live on the show? And will you be coming back to Chicago anytime soon? JimmyDoorComedy.com is my website. You can sign up for the uh, membership program. You get all the extra videos, all that stuff. All our, our live dates are there. And I don't know what's happening with COVID. So we've kind of pulled back on booking stuff for the fall and the winter. And we want to see what's happening with how people are handling the masks mandates and the vaccine passes and all that stuff. So it, 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 we, we're just going to wait and see how it works. Um, but JimmyDoorComedy.com so everybody can follow me there. Great note to end it on. Uh, my name is Kit Gabel, the host of Heartlands Media. We're here with Chicago's very own Jimmy Dore. And if you want to choose to be violent on social media, be careful how you use your adverbs, pronouns, nouns, adjectives, verbs, all that good stuff. Peace and take care.